Hello and good afternoon. This is an interesting case summary that combines uh, one of my favorite topics, which is piercing the corporate veil. And it's an Indiana case that came down uh, June 11th, approximately 2020. And it deals with a bad contractor that uh, failed to perform on their deal. So if you are a property owner, an investor, and you've hired contractors to do work, and it didn't go well, uh, you're not alone. So as you'll see in this case, the, this was a concrete contractor that did some work and uh, the damages were $155,000. The claim became a veil piercing case, meaning the plaintiff wanted to look through the corporate veil and get to the individuals personally. In this case, they were getting through the corporate veil to the new successor entities. So what happened factually is that uh, this company entered into a contract in Ohio, which is a key, to do work in Connecticut. Then they defaulted. Then the owners formed a new company in Indiana, came back to Indiana, and allegedly transferred all the assets of the former company to the new company in order to avoid their creditors, such as the $155,000 claim. So uh, legally, it becomes a veil-piercing issue of where if they move the ball back and forth under the uh, as a shell game, is there really a deal? So what the Court of Appeals decided was that there was no valid judgment. So there was a default entered back in Ohio because the defendants didn't show up for their hearing. So default judgments entered. And then they tried to domesticate, which is a collections process, domesticate the claim back in Indiana where the new Indiana companies had been formed. And the Court of Appeals said, wait a minute, all the reasons that you could have had a default judgment were invalid in Ohio, so the judgment isn't any good. And the only way you could have <clears throat> had a valid claim is if you transacted any business in Ohio that would have then supported the default judgment in Ohio. And <clears throat> the court said, we don't buy it that entering into a contract for work done in another state constitutes entering a transaction in Ohio. So they looked past uh, all of that and said, go back to the beginning. Let's look at what happened in Ohio. Nothing really happened in Ohio from a legal standpoint. And therefore, the default judgment was improper. Therefore, the veil piercing was improper. Therefore, you can't attach this uh, judgment and these assets in Indiana. Therefore, you can't look to the Indiana companies, right? So that's a lot of, that's a lot of dominoes falling in the way. Uh, interesting case brings up a lot of good law that we lawyers like to, to assess and determine on a, a daily basis. But I wanted you to have that because A, you, we all have contractors that are difficult and situations that go bad, and we also have multi-state deals that are going on. I know you do as well. You're from other states a lot of times investing in Indiana or Florida. So I wanted to, wanted to go through that case with you and help you, again, understand one more case on veil piercing and long-arm jurisdiction. That's it. I'll put the site on the website. Thank you.